Now that we've seen the definition of a composition series, in this last video, I want to introduce the notion of a solvable group. Part of the reason I want to do this is that the, uh, um, the definition looks similar, so you've already gotten used to thinking about this a little bit. Uh, and also, um, solvable groups are going to play an important role in 206C when we talk about Galois theory. So not for a long time. Uh, but really what I want to do is I want to prove one result for you that um, shows this idea of saying, if we have a normal subgroup N and we can understand enough about N and about the quotient G mod N, then we can stitch that information together to prove some things about G. OK, so what does it mean to be solvable? So G is solvable if there is a chain of subgroups. The trivial subgroup is G0, normal inside G1, normal inside G2, up to Gs, which is going to be the whole group G such that the successive quotients gi plus 1 mod gi is abelian for each i. OK, so I already said the name comes from Galois theory. Uh, sort of trivially, abelian groups are solvable because we already know that quotients of abelian groups are abelian. So uh, when you introduce a new definition, it's good to have examples, but also non-examples. And a big theorem that's going to play an important role in Galois theory is that Sn is not solvable for any n greater than or equal to 5. That notation solvable has to do with solving polynomial equations of degree n uh, for n at least 5. So this property of Sn being solvable tells you something about how to write down solutions to polynomial equations. So the proposition that I want to focus on in this video is the following. So let's say that n is a normal subgroup of G. If n and G mod n are both solvable, then so is G. If we know something about n and something about G mod n, we can combine that information to write down a chain of subgroups that shows that G is solvable. And uh, I like proving this result because it's going to use the isomorphism theorems that started this lecture. So just before we do the proof, let's do a little application. So uh, I said in a previous video that Sn has this subgroup An, the alternating group, that has index 2. Since it has index 2, it's automatically normal. So we already proved that. So the quotient is a group. And Sn mod An, well, index 2, this is isomorphic to Z mod 2Z. This is abelian, so it's definitely solvable. So what does that mean? If An were solvable, applying this proposition, we would see that Sn would be solvable as well. But this big theorem we're going to prove later is that Sn is not solvable when n is at least 5. So a corollary of these two results together is that An is not solvable for n at least 5. So I'm going to pause and erase, and then uh, I will give you the proof of this proposition. Let's do the proof. So we want to show. If n is a normal subgroup of G and n is solvable and G mod n is solvable, then G is also solvable. So let's say that G hat is G mod n. Let's just write down what it means for n to be solvable and what it means for G mod n to be solvable and hope that this suggests what to do. So n is solvable, so there's this chain of subgroups. n0 is a trivial subgroup, normal inside n1, normal inside n2, up to n, n will be the, the whole group. So that's a chain of subgroups where each successive quotient is abelian. And i plus 1 mod ni is an abelian group. g mod n is solvable. So we have this chain of subgroups, g bar 0, g bar 1, uh, g m bar being the whole group, where each successive quotient, g i plus 1 bar mod g i bar, is abelian. OK. But we know a lot about subgroups of G mod n from the lattice isomorphism theorem. The lattice isomorphism theorem says for each of these GI bars, there is a subgroup GI of G that contains n and is automatically a normal subgroup of GI because if n is normal in G, it's normal in any subgroup of G that contains n. So we can say, well, what is the quotient? 
GI mod N is isomorphic to GI bar. So the lattice isomorphism theorem says for every one of these subgroups in this chain, we have a subgroup of G. OK, well, we need to know something about successive quotients of that, those subgroups of G. And the third isomorphism theorem, the invert and cancel one, tells us what we need to know, that GI plus 1 bar mod GI bar, that's GI plus 1 mod N mod GI mod N, right? That's what we get from the previous statement, is isomorphic to GI plus 1 mod GI. So what do we know? We know that GI plus 1 mod GI is isomorphic to GI plus 1 bar mod GI bar. But now we're in business because we know something about GI plus 1 bar mod GI bar. Each one of those quotients is abelian. So now we just write down this whole chain that we have. 1, uh, n1, n2, up to nn, which is just the subgroup n. But that is, n is the subgroup corresponding to g0. Then we have g1, g2, up to gm. And this is a chain of subgroups now where each successive quotient is abelian. The quotients in the first part come from the fact that n is solvable. And the quotients in the second part come from the fact that GI plus 1 mod GI is isomorphic to something that we know is abelian because G mod N is solvable. So we've shown that G is solvable by writing down a chain of subgroups using the lattice isomorphism theorem uh, that shows that the, this group is solvable. 